As young people, we get inundated in this country with a lot of things financially that we're probably not ready to handle when we're 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. You're coming out of high school, you're going into college, and the world opens up a little bit. But if you're not prepared and you're not educated and you're not taught by your school, which doesn't teach you this stuff, or by your parents and what is out there and some of the traps that are laid, then it can have effects, negative effects on you that will last for years and years to come, even though you're just getting started out in the world. Hi, this is Wrestling with Finance, and today we're gonna to talk about some of the mistakes that I made when I was in my late teens and early 20s. So hopefully any younger person watching this can possibly avoid those mistakes and maybe some older people who did make those mistakes and may still be dealing with them at this stage in life in their 30s and 40s and so on. Uh, can probably get some, hopefully some inspiration that it's not the end of the world and that you can eventually get out of it. It just takes some time. One thing that you can do to kind of help out with numbers is by hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe button and a notification bell in order for you to be notified about when I have videos coming up and to help the YouTube algorithm that's a hard one to say, help it to tell other people who may be in your situation about this video because it definitely does help and that's the way YouTube works. So I appreciate it very much when you guys do that. You guys have been helping the channel grow slowly but surely. So when I was a, yeah, gosh, when I was coming out of high school, like everybody and it, when you're 18 years old, you think you know everything. I know everything, I know what's going on. Nobody can tell me anything. Nobody can give me any information. I know everything, not you and I'm gonna do what I wanna do, and that's my attitude during the time. Now, my situation was very unique, however. Um, I wound up going to school locally after high school, and immediately the first trap that was set for me was I got sent, and I'm sure a lot of people know this, who know where I'm going with this, I got sent in the mail, my own mail, which was very unique for me being at home, but the mail I got sent was from credit card companies. And those credit card companies wanted me to get a credit card because I was young and I was an adult now and I could do that. It's kind of amazing to think back now, like I, I, I accepted them, I signed up and I was like, ooh, it's money because they tell you, you are you're approved for you know $2,000, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, wow, I get $2,000 just by putting my name and stuff in this and sending it in the mail and they send me a card and I can use it? Well, that's great. Unfortunately, I didn't understand what credit was and what a credit card was, and I thought I was just getting money. I thought that's the way it worked, that you just get this money as an adult, and they just give you this credit, and then eventually you can pay it back um, over time, although the paying it back part <laughs> was not my best suit. I don't even remember what I used all of that money for. Um, I probably, it probably was like little stuff here and there. Like if I ran out of cash, I probably used it for stuff. I probably used it to buy things that are like big ticket items. I, I also probably thought at the time that's how you get TVs and stuff and things are really expensive because you see, you know, other people you know who aren't really making that much money, but they have, you know, fancy shoes and they have TV sets and at the time, Playstations and Xboxes and stuff. And I was like, well, I want that. So I don't have $200 right now, but I'll put it on. I got this card, this Capital One card. I'll put it on there. And I did, and I did that a lot, apparently. And to the point where it was running at a deficit. And I kept getting the, the and this is something, unfortunately, people who are not very good and not very responsible with finances do, is you get those little notices in the mail that says, hey, you owe this money. And you go, eh, I'll do it for later. Next month it comes and you go, eh, I'll do it for later. Then they start sending you warnings and stuff and you're like, uh, I guess I have to deal with this. And you put like $10 towards a $2,000 bill and then, okay, I, I gave them $10. They should be happy for a couple months. And then you just go on and keep ignoring the notices. And unfortunately, of course, that really damages your credit, which I, again, at 20 years old, I didn't understand that that's what it was doing, that it was going to prohibit me from being able to do things in the future. Another thing that I did at the time, which is also I consider to be a major mistake, is I was actually making a lot of money. I, you know, for a 20 year old, I had a three bedroom apartment down in the middle of one of the, you know, upper middle, middle class, slightly upper middle class areas of uh, the Baltimore County, Baltimore metropolitan area. And I had a car and I was doing well. I just wasn't paying my bills and just spending all this cash on other stuff that I wanted to do. And then eventually every once in a while, I'll be like, all right, I'll pay this bill and I'll pay it off. And then 
keep going and spending and spending and spending. And a lot of what I had at the time because of me being involved in nightclub stuff and being involved in doing freelance stuff and freelance work for people, doing other things, I got paid in cash a lot. And I was of the mindset, which I do see a lot of people uh, have, and I hear it all the time. I heard it the other day with some guy uh, walking down the street from the gas station that was at. He was talking on the phone and talking about, I don't do no bank accounts, I do cash. And I'm just like, yeah, I know that mistake. I, I know that mindset, I know that mistake. And it is a big mistake. Even if you get in cash, get cash, and I had thousands of dollars coming in in cash, um, you don't wanna just sock that under your bed or, or leave it in your wallet, which I crazily did at the time. I would walk around with like $3,000 in my wallet, which was all the money I had, and I would walk around with it in my wallet and go and just go to the bars and go to the clubs and take vacations. Um, Back then at the time, you could go to the airport and buy plane tickets in cash. This is before 9-11 and nobody would bat an eyelash. And that's what I did quite often, not only for my own personal stuff, but I was also, like I said, doing nightclub stuff. So I would hire DJs to do my nightclub shows and I'd go to the airport and pay in cash in order to get the pay for the plane tickets and to pay for the hotels in cash. And I pay for everything in cash. I never used the credit card because I had already maxed it out at that point in time. I didn't even have a bank account until I was 22 years old. Correction, I did have a bank account, I just never used it. And then when I was 22, I was like, hmm, maybe I should actually do this adult thing about putting cash into the bank account. And there's still a lot of people I know in my life today who are in their 30s and 40s who still live like this. You know, it's all cash. They have, they, if they have a bank account, they don't use it or they don't have one. They, their credit cards are all maxed out because they, like me, didn't know what to do with them. They certainly don't have any investments or bonds or real estate or cryptocurrency or anything like that. that that's, that's some other stuff that other people do. I don't do that. Cash, fool. So the cash is not getting any money. They're spending it on frivolous stuff. They're not saving any of it because I definitely wasn't saving any of it. And you just kind of, and that's how you wind up living day to day, paycheck to paycheck. And if something comes up, they get wiped out. And unfortunately for me, and I would say actually not for, unfortunately, I think fortunately for me, because I don't think I would have learned the lesson if this hadn't happened. But about, I think I was age 23, 24, the bottom fell out on a lot of the things I was doing that was giving me cash, that I was making cash from, and they were just gone. This was like right after 9-11. And I was in bad shape. And I had this apartment I had to pay for. I still had a car and other stuff. And I didn't have the means in order to be able to protect myself against that. I didn't have any saved savings. I didn't have any cash saved up. My credit was screwed, so I couldn't get credit cards. So I was in really bad shape, a really bad shape for about two years. And thankfully, I did have family that did help me out. And I did, and I took that time to sit and learn and go, wait a minute, okay, I gotta get this straight because what I was doing before, I thought I was being slick, but it isn't the way things are done and I don't ever, ever wanna be in this position again where literally I have to live in my car and because I can't go back to my apartment because there are people waiting there for me for money. And then I get evicted from my apartment. So then all my stuff that I bought with all that cash is now gone because they put your stuff out and people in the neighborhood come and take it because you're not there. And um, that happened to me and it sucked. And it, I never, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> ever wanted to do that again. So fortunately, like I said, I did have some some people in my life, and my mother in particular, who was very instrumental with helping me out, which is why you always should be nice to your mothers. Mother's Day is coming up, by the way, so definitely be nice to your mothers. Um, but she did wind up helping. When I finally, <laughs> when I finally sucked down my pride after living in my car for three months, I sucked it up and was like, all right, I'm gonna go ask for help. And I did ask for help. And Basically what I got, I didn't get any financial advice from anybody else, but what I did is I did, like I said before, started thinking about what I was doing and then started learning about, well, how am I supposed to do this? How do the adult people do this? How is it that somebody can afford to spend $20,000 to renovate a kitchen? How is it that people can even afford to put a down payment on a house? How do other people do this stuff? And then when started the process of me paying attention, a lot of the help I got, oddly enough, was from AM radio. 
depending on what city you're in, there are probably AM radio stations that on weekends and probably sometimes after the afternoon drive, rush hour drive, will have financial shows on the air. And I started listening to those. There were commercials for things. At this time, Immigrant Direct was a thing um, that was brand new. The online banks were brand new and they were giving like 7.5% interest on any savings that you had. So the last little $500 of cash I had, I went and put it into the bank. And I finally said, all right, I'm not doing this cash thing anymore. Put this in the bank and I left, left it in the bank and let it sit there. And it came into use over time and then that started me learning how money actually worked and what money actually was. Again, for those of us who kind of live like, I'm just gonna do cash thing, we don't really know because all of that financial stuff is very complicated and we don't wanna bother learning it. We, we're we doing fine with, with what we're doing, but what we don't understand is that we're setting ourselves up for failure in the future. And again, if anything goes wrong, we're screwed because we don't have any backup. And at that point in time, I, like I said, when I was about 25 years old was the first time I learned about compound interest. And I was like, wait a minute. So if you put your money in the bank, they pay you to keep your money in the bank. Like I had never even heard of that. I thought that was like the craziest thing in the world that banks paid you money to keep your money in the bank. And I was like, oh, so that's how this works. And then the wheels started turning. And then I started learning a lot more about finances at that particular point in time. I don't think I became, I wouldn't say I became an expert overnight. I think it took, it probably took another 10 years before I really, really caught on and keyed into what I should do with my money and about investing and everything else. But that started me on the road to actually taking the time to go learn, to read, to watch videos, because YouTube was just becoming a big thing at the time. Uh, there wasn't a lot of financial uh, education videos online, but there were videos and there were articles and there were blogs and there were, you know, little, um, back then in the day, used to be bulletin boards where you could go and read people. And I would read what people would talk about and I would be confused by all these acronyms and percentages and everything else. And I was like, I don't understand any of this stuff. But over the years, and as I continued to educate myself on it, I began to learn. And then eventually I did get myself to a good spot. That's why I said in, in some of my initial videos uh, on this channel, one of the first things you wanna do, especially if you're in that kind of situation, is you wanna pay off any credit card debt that you have. That's something that you definitely, at, at the very least, get it down to 50%. If you can get it paid down to at least 50%, uh, that you only owe 50% on all the total credit that you, you have taken out, especially in credit cards, that's a good place to start. Then start putting some money away for savings. Put some money away for a rainy day. Put some money away at least three to six months of your expenses, your monthly expenses, uh, rent or mortgage, uh, what you usually spend on food per week. Uh, if you have a car payment, if you have car insurance, if you have a cell phone bill, uh, you know, cable, internet, whatever it is that you feel that you have to have in order to live day to day, put enough money away to cover that for three to six months. Once you do that, there's this like, and then literally you feel like this weight lifted off your shoulders. You don't have that anymore. And that's when I kind of realized once I finally got my first three, when I hit that first time when I had three months of expenses saved up in the bank, I felt that. I felt that, ah, oh, this is so different from when I had cash and everything was kind of, you know, fly by the seat of your pants and I don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring. I didn't have that anymore. And then that allowed me to kind of go further. And it also excited me, encouraged me to learn more. Like, okay, I know there's people out there that make a lot of money doing this stuff. They're not smarter than I am. I can read, I can learn, I can retain information. So let me go figure out what they did so I can do something similar and then be able to have myself in a stable place as an adult, at that point in time, at 25, 26 years old, I was an adult and I did feel a little bit of an embarrassment of the fact that I was still, at that point in time before I got my stuff together, still doing the whole, everything's in cash, just go to the go to the liquor store and cash your paycheck and put it to cash in your pocket. I can't believe, it's like so funny now to, to think about, that's how I used to live. I would never do that today. And I would advise anybody else never to do that. And you know, th this, again, if there's anything that anybody gets out of this video, if you're a person that's doing that right now, hopefully you get out of this video, don't do that. Get your bank account, get yourself some savings. Don't leave it underneath the mattress because you're just not gaining any interest. Again, like I said, banks pay you to keep your money in there. If they're gonna give away free money, go ahead and take it. 
and find don't but just but don't use like Bank of America or stuff like that. Use a high interest savings account. Again, Ally Bank is a good one. American Express has a good high savings account. You can even do it in crypto if you want to use BlockFi. There's a link down below, of course, if you want to check out BlockFi. They pay 8.6% on USD, which is basically like a, a big a crypto coin that's matched with a dollar dollar for one dollar of GUSD is a dollar in the real world so you and they will pay you every single month 8.6 percent on whatever you have in there and compound it so do that <laughs> do that again it's free money do it but in all seriousness and all the jokes aside I don't if I think if I hadn't gone through that I kind of wonder what had happened if I had been able to coast longer with just having cash and never having a bank account and never learning about any of this stuff. Um, I kind of, again, I see people that I know who they never did have that issue or they never did have the time to sit and think and go, okay, let me, let me do this the right way. And I see what's going on with them. And it, do, it is very scary, especially when you get older. It's very scary when you start hitting 30 and you hit 40 and you hit 50. And I'm sure by the time you're 60, it's over. But when you hit those ages and you're like, I'm still living the same way I was when I was 18 years old. I'm still living in the same type of apartment that I was 20 years ago. I'm still spending money the same way I was 20 years ago. The debt that I had at the time is racking up and up and up, and I don't know how I'm gonna pay it. I'm never, it's like $20,000, I don't have $20,000, but I still wanna live my life the way that I live it, so I'm just gonna kind of pay enough to keep them from like taking me to court. Meanwhile, my credit score is 420 points, so, yeah, we're going to talk about that too, um, especially with the new credit program that may or may not start pretty soon. But with the current credit program, I'm definitely going to be doing a video about that and how there are some very easy ways in which you can improve your credit score. And again, wrestling with finance is about wrestling with finance. This is a channel not for people who are like, ah, I'm a millionaire. This is a channel for people who have had problems with their finances in the past and what you can do to improve it in the future, hence the term wrestling with finance so hopefully you guys got something out of this at least some inspiration um again if you want to get started on your journey i got a lot of gifts and tools and stuff for you guys down in the description box below you can get two free stocks from webull if you deposit a hundred dollars in the account you can get up to eighteen hundred and fifty dollars per stock for the two stocks that you will get for free from there and get yourself started on investing you can also if you want to get into crypto you can use blockfi like i mentioned before they pay 8.6 percent on your stable coin which is again the one-to-one -one ratio to the dollar and i think they're paying now like five percent on bitcoin 4.5 percent on ethereum and so on and so forth and if you still say hey i want to get some entertainment try amazon prime out for free you get 30 day free trial down in the description box below so check out all that stuff if that will be beneficial to you and definitely let me know in the comment box if you know what's your journey what did you have these problems when you were younger or did you have you know mentors or parents who kept you out of that are you still in that situation where you're still just like cash fool let me know let your voice be heard in the comment box below until then i'll see you guys next time for more videos here on wrestling with finance have a good day